Hey everybody. Today we're talking about z-scores, also known as standard scores. This is just a way of measuring relative position within a data set. A z-score is the number of standard deviations that a value is above or below the mean. For instance, if you have a set with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 8, then a value of 62 has a z-score of 1.5. Because 62 is 12 points over the mean, and 12 points is 1.5 standard deviations. Z-scores are a good measure for relative position within a data set when you have symmetric distributions, and in particular when you have bell-shaped or normal distributions. When you have data that's skewed or that has outliers, the mean and standard deviation aren't generally good measures of center and spread, and since the z-score is based on mean and standard deviation, it becomes less useful as a measure of relative position. Here's the formula for z-scores. z equals x minus mu over sigma. So x is the value in the data set that you're interested in, mu is the mean of the data set, and sigma is the standard deviation. By the way, you'll sometimes see the mean here written with an x bar and the standard deviation written with an s. Um, it really doesn't change what the formula means, of course. Z-scores are particularly useful when we're comparing relative position of values in different data sets. Let's see an example of what I'm talking about. The mean height of adult men in the United States is 69.4 inches, with standard deviation 3.0 inches. The mean height of adult women in the United States is 64.2 inches, and the standard deviation is 2.7 inches. Which is more unusual, a 64.2 inch tall man, or a 69.4 inch tall woman? So a woman with the average height of a man, and a man with the average height of a woman. Let's compute some z-scores. So for the man, we have 64.2 minus 69.4 over 3. So you take his height minus the average height of men and divide it by the standard deviation of men. We get negative 1.73. So this individual would be 1.73 standard deviations below the mean height of men. Similarly, for the woman, we compute a z-score of 69.4 minus 64.2 over 2.7. Her height minus the mean height of women divided by the standard deviation of the heights of all women. Notice that uh, the denominators are different in these two cases because the two, two distributions have different standard deviations, different amounts of variability. In this case, we get 1.93. The woman is 1.93 standard deviations over the mean in height. So um, in absolute value, the z-score for the woman is greater than the z-score for the man, so she's more unusual. Her height is further from average, relatively speaking. By the way, notice that we've made that decision despite the fact that the two of them are um, the same amount from the average, um, namely um, 5.2 inches. Generally, most of the data in any distribution lies within one standard deviation of the mean. Z-scores tend to be small in absolute value. As a convention, we sometimes consider data that lies more than two standard deviations away from the mean to be unusual, and data that lies more than three standard deviations from the mean to be very unusual. But this is only a rule of thumb. It's not a sharp distinction. One way to convince yourself of that is just to notice that there's um, generally not much difference at all between data that has z-scores of 1.99 and 2.01. Those z-scores are very close. Although one would be considered unusual and the other would not according to this standard. Here's an example of how that standard could be applied. Should a 76 inch tall man be considered unusual? Recall that the average height of men in the United States was 69.4 inches and the standard deviation was 3 inches. So we compute a z-score, we take his height, subtract the mean height, and divide by the standard deviation, and we get 2.2. So this individual is 2.2 standard deviations taller than average. And we would consider that unusual according to the standard. The absolute value of that z-score is greater than 2. 
According to the empirical rule, when a distribution has approximately a bell shape, a normal um, shape, about 68% of z-scores will be between negative 1 and 1. That is, about 68% of values in that data set will be within one standard deviation of the mean. Similarly, about 95% of values will have a z-score between negative 2 and 2, and 99.7% of values will have a z-score between negative 3 and 3. So nearly all of it. Um, the empirical rule here in particular, I think, validates the convention that we saw in the previous slide of saying that a value will be considered unusual if it's more than two standard deviations from the mean, and very unusual if it's more than three standard deviations from the mean. Let's conclude with a short example. The heights of adult women in the United States have an approximate bell shape with, with mean 64.2 inches and standard deviation of 2.7 inches. So, approximately 68% of women are going to have heights within one standard deviation of that mean. So, we subtract 2.7 from 64.2 to get 61.5, and then add it to 64.2 to get 66.9. Similarly, if we go two standard deviations from the mean, we get 58.8 and 69.6. 95% of women approximately, will lie in that range. And then going three standard deviations below the mean and above the mean, we get a range within which 99.7% of women will fall, approximately. 